Okay guys, let's uh, continue our discussion on the concepts. So today we will be deriving uh, some equations applicable to the behavior of beams uh, experiencing lateral torsion backlink. So for the figure shown, the orientation of your axis is actually defined on the basis of the previous uh, orientation we have on our first lecture on torsion where in the z-axis uh, is directed on the longitudinal axis of the member on which the torsional moment is actually measured and your uh, y uh, direction and x direction are of course uh, oriented on the basis of the right hand coordinate system so this is your uh, x and this is your uh, y direction So if you take a look at the uh, the top view as shown here on the board, your orientation here is actually rotated this manner. So this is your uh, orientation x uh, vertical y and say. So this may mean a global uh, uh, orientation, or but for some it may be localized. So beware of the the orientation of your x, y, z coordinates. Uh, it might uh, confuse you, uh, especially when you're doing some programs in uh, uh, beam analysis. Okay, so. For the top view here, you will notice that your uh, direction x is now here and your direction z is going to the right, which uh, serves as your uh, plane of reference and therefore your bending uh, in this direction is actually, in this consideration, the, this top view is actually lateral. So this uh, refers to your lateral uh, bending while uh, uh, your y, which is the vertical axis, this side view here, uh, refers to your vertical flexure bending, okay? So for the sectional uh, view uh, at the point here, uh, it is shown that your your positive uh, torsional rotation is actually measured counterclockwise by the value of t. Okay, when the vertical direction is y and your horizontal direction is x, so your your torsional or angle of twist is now measured in terms of the the uh, value of uh, phi which uh, can also be uh, uh, the basis for your uh, computation for the component of your MO. MO is the, is the depending about the main axis or simply the, the uh, strong axis uh, bending moment. Okay, so if we look into the resolution of uh, moments or forces, your your uh, moment about the 
uh, the, the uh, local uh, y prime axis will simply be mov and your moment about the local x prime axis will simply be mo cosine of your angle of twist if you are looking at this direction but if you are looking at the on the uh, uh, x c plane your your component mx prime and mz prime will simply be uh, a, a uh, resolution of moments no? considering this uh, slope defined by the derivative of u with respect to z okay uh, which defines the rotation into which your x prime and z prime axis uh, uh, is rotated so this will be the angles here will be the orientation will be the basis for our a matrix of direction cosine defined in this table okay so in this table uh, known as the matrix of direction cosine or simply the transformation of matrix the transformation matrix which defines the cosine of the angles uh, measured from uh, the the prime axis to the end prime axis or vice versa okay so this is now the the original uh, axis which is the the uh, shall i say the, the uh, uh, undeformed okay undeformed uh, coordinate system and these are now the deformed coordinate system so after the formation, your x, y, z axis will no longer be the same in orientation as that with the x prime, y prime, and the z prime axis. And all of these are simply the cosine of the angle between them. So if, if we measure uh, angles, uh, this is simply uh, the cosine uh, of the angle from x say theta uh, x to x prime okay and this is simply equal to the cosine of theta from uh, y to x prime and this is simply the cosine of theta from z to x prime and so on and so forth okay so this is simply the cosine of theta from x to y prime, the cosine of theta from y to y prime, and the cosine of theta from z to y prime. Okay, this is the cosine of theta from x to z prime, cosine of theta from y to z prime, and the cosine of theta from z so if we look at the figure now we simply get the the plane into which the the axis is considered so from x to x prime uh, the angle for small deformations becomes zero so all of these uh, values here okay all of these values on the diagonal matrix will have a cosine of zero degrees okay. okay and the cosine of zero degrees is simply one uh, this uh, is based on small angle or deformation theory okay So how about the other components on the off-diagonal uh, matrix? No? So take note of uh, these two here. The cosine of uh, the angle between y to x prime is simply the sine of the complementary angle. So if we take a look at the, the angle from y to x prime, so this is the angle. Okay, so this is y to x prime. 
So it's directed counterclockwise, and therefore this must be the negative of 90 minus P. Okay? So if we take the cosine of, uh, of this, this is simply uh, equivalent okay, to the sine, the negative sine of your uh, angle P. So the, the cosine of a complementary angle is simply the sine of the angle itself. And that is from y uh, to, to x prime. So here, uh, we take note that the sine of phi is simply equivalent to the tangent phi. Okay? Or simply equivalent to phi. That's why you have here a phi value. Now, for the negative sign there, it doesn't matter if you use a negative of a negative sign of this complementary for as long as uh, they are they are uh, measured on the way on, on, on the on the context of uh, assuming a clockwise direction as positive or negative. So it depends. the The point is they must always be. Uh, orthogonal, no meaning to say that this is negative, this must this is positive, this must be the negative of it. Okay, because uh, y prime x, when I when I look into a, a y prime to x direction, so I'm referring now to to uh, this angle here. Okay, which is simply 90 plus p. Okay, so this is a negative sign there. Okay, so the, the sine of 90 plus phi is simply uh, is the cosine, no? and the sine, or sorry, the cosine of a negative 90 plus phi is simply equivalent to a, a uh, negative. Uh, Or positive, this will be positive sine of phi. Okay, so this will now be equal to the tangent of phi and uh, equivalent to phi. Okay, so since that is a positive, this must be negative, or if this is negative or positive, that must be uh, negative. So, so these two here are already obtained from that from that okay so if i now take a, a du and a dv there these angles are simply the angles defined on this uh, axis so if you are considering a z x prime okay so i must i i am referring now to this okay so this is now a z a z x prime so this is the angle that we are uh, okay so this is simply 90 minus du of dz okay so if i take the cosine of this this will be simply be equal to uh, a very small this is a very small angle since it's a very small angle, so this becomes a cosine of 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Okay. Okay. So here your. Your angle, your, your small deformation theory does not apply. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, if we cannot if we cannot involve the DUDZ and the DVDZ value here, 
then the, 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 the solution to the differential equation fails. So we have to come up with the, the uh, sine and cosine of the sum of an angle. Okay. So we apply here an identity to solve this problem. So this is uh, actually not okay applicable. So we are therefore using an identity here, trigonomic identity to solve the problem. What's the cosine of 90 minus an angle? So this is simply uh, the cosine of 90, cosine of uh, du dz, okay, minus sine of 90, sine of du dz. Okay, so this is 0. Sine 90 is 1. Okay, so this is a negative of du dz. So that's how the value of this was obtained. Again, um, the sign may not be the same. No, it can be positive here but negative there, for as long as they are orthogonal to each other. Okay, or you call this the anti-symmetry effect. So, so is true with your DVDZ in this particular case. So this will be uh, a, a z to y prime. Okay, so again, this is a 90 minus a dv dz. So same identity would follow, but this time, uh, the sign of 90 can be a, a, a positive one or a negative one. So again, as I mentioned, if this is a, a negative, this must be, uh, sorry, they are both, uh, we are talking of a zy prime. Okay, so they are both negative here. And if you try to do it the other way around for the x z prime and y z prime, so you must have a positive value here. So this is still equivalent to a negative dv. Okay, so that's how the matrix of direction cosine is done using continuum mechanics. You have learned this from continuum mechanics. I just want you to recall it for clarity in our discussion. Okay, so this is now your uh, uh, your your representation of the, the the transformation matrix. So this is the T the transformation formation matrix, or simply the matrix of direction cosine. And the curvature equation, the x, y, z axis are now defined. Okay, we take note uh, that uh, m is simply e i over uh, e i times the curvature. The curvature on the uh, on the x direction, sorry, on on the y direction is v d squared v. Okay, so this refers now to your curvature. On the y direction, so t uh, along y, and this refers to the curvature p along x. This is y. Okay. So when I, I need the moment of inertia of x when I when I when I uh, take the curvature along the y, and I need uh, my i y along the curvature x so it is actually very clear in this figure that if i have a y direction as my curvature my uh, phi is my i axis is x okay strong axis if i have a curvature on, on the the other direction my axis will be y okay and for my curvature on the z direction, okay, which is this one, 
So the moment here is now a, a component. Okay? It's now the, the uh, X component. Okay? MOV. And my moment here is the Z component, which is MO times the slope. Okay, so this is now the uh, slope, okay, along the uh, Z component. Okay, so the curvature for torsion is the torsional PDE. Okay, so this is now your PDE for torsion. It's the torsion for the curvature in along along x and this is the the uh, ed along the per, uh, along the curvature uh, of the curvature along the y direction okay uh, differentiating with respect to uh, z this uh, pd here we come up with uh, this okay so this becomes d to the fourth and this becomes now another moment curvature relation Okay, so this is another moment curvature relation. If we, if we define now uh, our, our curvature relationship, considering U as your displacement, remember that U is a displacement variable. What is the, the, the second derivative of a displacement? It's actually uh, equivalent to... Uh, your your moment okay your moment and the moment we are talking about here is simply your moment m o v all over e i okay so uh, remember the, the the curvature relationship um i'll take note that uh, m over e i is equal to v and v is simply equal to uh, this uh, the derivative the second derivative of uh, let's say y with respect to x okay that's why in your double integration method uh, where y here is the displacement we are talking about so it's there's only a change in variable for y on the u there okay now the moment here is actually the component MOV in this regard. So this is the component I'm talking about here. So if I now place uh, the value of your uh, uh, this squared u here, I can have a double moment MO del over EIY squared, or sorry, MO squared over EIY phi. Okay, so I just uh, plug plug this uh, this value there to get this one, and rearranging it again, uh, taking this to the left side. This is now the PDE for the angle of twist, considering warping. So this is that now the the uh, basis for your. Um, finite element solution for non-circular section. So in your finite element analysis, uh, you have to have learned this. You need to have learned this non-circular section. So if you want to explore more of, about this, see Salmon and Johnson for the complete solution of this PD. I will no longer I'll give you the complete solution of it because I normally take uh, this topic in the finite element method. And that's all for uh, the uh, derivation of the lateral torsion problem concept theory. I'll see you on the next uh, video.